Okay, so now we're going to look at a 3D hex mesh for a local joint machining. And again, this will take geometry imports, uh, we'll partition the solid into mappable regions, 3D hex meshing, check the element quality, analysis verification through normal mode analysis, and then export the model, model for production work. The full process will complete in less than eight minutes. Okay, so we'll start by importing some geometry. You'll see in the bottom left-hand corner we've got a timer running. We haven't speeded anything up or removed anything from the process. Uh, I'm speaking over the um, the operation. Uh, I recorded this earlier, uh, so now you can just hear my voice. Uh, so we have the model browser uh, tree showing we've got a single geome geometric entity. Uh, the 2D meshable uh, color icon is, is on, which shows the entity in red. So the, uh, when it was originally imported, nothing could be hex meshed. Uh, we're now looking at breaking up the solid, partitioning it by splitting the overall solid into a series of subsolids or partitions which are mappable for the 3D hex mesh. And we're working our way around the model looking for planes or faces that, that break up the model into a natural form that, that we can use the, uh, the mappable hex mesh on. So a lot of this is, comes down to judgment and experience, but as we are splitting the geometry, Apex gives us real-time feedback in terms of the colours. So it, it's really a case of just chopping out, uh, slicing and dicing, as, as I've heard one person calling this, uh, the geometry in, in a manner which means we can, uh, we can use the hex mesh algorithm. Um, so as we're chopping, you can see here that we perhaps chopped a little bit too much. So it, it's a balance between splitting geometry uh, to break geometry up and then boolean, boolean union geometry to um, rejoin areas which we perhaps didn't want to split. So we're just using the, the boolean operation at the moment. So we've got this little tiny solid left on the outside which we need to uh, boolean together. So once we've cleaned that up, we can see that, that portion of the of the knuckle has turned green. So it's it's good to go in terms of the, the, the um, hex mesh. Um, so we've got a good definition for the bulk of the region. We've just got this, this central part we need to remove. So again, just picking uh, a plane in this case rather than a surface, just to make the final cut for that uh, left-hand region. And then we've got the two um, lugs coming up, which, the, well, for, from inspection, we don't have a natural plane to cut through. So what we're going to do is create a filler surface across two curves and then break the geometry based on that filler surface. And again, uh, well, just, just reselecting those, we, we didn't pick the edges quite as intended. Um, so if you hide the solid, we can see the underlying surface that, that we've got. And then repeating that for the, um, the transition region is slightly further up. Uh, coming down to the second region, um, and again, some knowledge here, but effectively we can understand, or I've got knowledge of this, that, that helps me understand how we're going to break the surface up, or the solid up I should say, or partition it. So splitting a face, I'm using that face split as one of the ed one of the um, edges for a split surface, which again we're going to create as a uh, filler surface. So we've got those geometric entities in place. It's just a case of picking the two edges and the surface is created, middle, middle mass button to accept. Um, as we run through, uh, no problem at all. Okay, so go back into the split function and set to surface partition and then just pick the two red regions and then the surface we want to split them about and back in and we've now got a fully hex meshable solid, everything shown in green. So we go into the 2.5D meshing algorithm which is effectively the, uh, the mappable solid um, hex algorithm. Uh, pick an appropriate element edge length, set the solid middle mass button to accept, the operation completes, uh, and we can now check the element quality. And it turns out now we do have some poor uh, elements, so we need to redefine the geometry or uh, break the geometry furthermore. Um, so we're going to do this based on uh, three points in a plane, so we can see where the, the geometry is struggling, or rather the mesh is struggling relative to the geometry. Uh, in this transition uh, shallow angle uh, where the hex mesh is, is getting confused and then 
giving us poor quality elements. So just pick the partition that we want to break and then uh, the three vertices that define a plane for that region. Um, so we pick two points and then we just need to pick a point on a curve. So changing the uh, selection icon to pick the curve. And we've got a, um, a feedback loop in terms of how the geometry is going to be broken up. Geometry split, uh, hex meshes um, being redefined and checking out the quality. So again, bulk of the, the model is, is good quality. We've got some um, transition elements which perhaps not the, the best quality but we can redefine those if necessary. Uh, so create a uh, material, so again uh, aluminium, aluminium 7000 series, uh, elastic modulus, Poisson's ratio and density. And again we're, we're just putting these in explicitly based on the unit system for the model but we could put them in in uh, PSI, KSI, English units and then the conversion will take place naturally within the Apex environment so uh, time saving there uh, if you're working with a different unit system uh, putting some displacement constraints on now so, so we've got the model or the, the, the geometry edits and the mesh complete so what we're going to do now is just a simple normal modes verification run uh, we could do this free free but we're just illustrating how we can put some of the constraints in and then place the model in the analysis scene as Apex calls it switch the environment type to normal modes and then run the analysis and the, the, the analysis runs very quickly and you can see the bottom left hand corner we, we're up to a run ready state within six minutes so a very quick way of manipulating geometry for hex meshing and obviously we're going to get the benefit of that downstream by having a very efficient model uh, perhaps a lot more efficient than a an equivalent 3d tetrahedral mesh which um, will usually have mid-side nodes as well so um, quite a bit of uh, advantage if, if if we're looking at a model that's going to be used in in, in all sorts of different um, situations uh, where we are interested in in model efficiency and we can see so the the, the embedded normal mode solver in apex just running through the model uh, maybe 20 30 seconds to solve and then we can look at the post processing and look at the uh, fringe plot of uh, displacement and the uh, displaced shape putting the element edges back on uh, just hiding from view and then we can look at the table of normal modes and then just cycle through so because this model is restrained then the first mode is an elastic mode and then we can just double check the uh, the mode shapes that we've got uh, we, can, we can look at strain energy as well to, uh, and strain energy density to, to understand um, if the model is, is behaving as, as intended uh, so once we've post processed and verified we can export the MSC Nastran input deck uh, so just run through that very quickly just looking through the browser just to get the um, uh, file locations um, so just type the name in set the unit system so we'll work in a in a millimeter um, Newton system export the model uh, open the deck and we can see the Nastran deck is complete and we are done